Last year, a couple in Texas got locked out by their own smart lock during a winter storm while their baby was inside. Ever wonder if the gadget you bought to feel more secure actually made you more vulnerable? Today, I'll explain smart lock risks like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand whether your front door is safer with a key, a code, or an app. You'll know what actually matters if you're trying not to get locked out or broken into. Here's what's actually happening with smart locks today. Most people upgrade to a smart lock because they're tired of hiding keys under fake rocks that fool absolutely nobody. Or they lost their keys at the gym for the third time this year. The pitch sounds perfect. No more fumbling with metal. Just tap your phone or punch in a code and you're in. But then you see a headline about some ring camera getting hacked. Or your coworker tells you about getting locked out during a power outage. Suddenly, that $250 gadget feels like a really expensive way to trap yourself outside in the rain. The question isn't whether technology is secure. It's whether you're more likely to screw up with a physical key or a digital code. Let's break down what you're actually choosing between. A traditional deadbolt with a key can't be hacked remotely because there's no internet connection. It's just metal and physics. But keys get lost at bars, copied by sketchy ex-roommates, or left under the doormat where literally every burglar checks first. It's like having a password written on a post-it note stuck to your laptop, technically secure until human behavior enters the chat. Smart locks, whether keypad, fingerprint, or app-based, remove that problem entirely because there's nothing physical to lose or copy. But they introduce new risks. Dead batteries at the worst possible moment. Weak passwords you recycled from your Netflix account. Cheap brands with encryption that wouldn't stop a determined middle schooler. Or you handing out access codes like candy and forgetting who has them. Now here's where it gets interesting. The Hollywood version of smart lock hacking, where some guy in a black turtleneck opens your door from a laptop in a van? That almost never happens with quality locks from reputable brands. It's technically possible, sure but it requires serious skill and effort that most criminals don't have. And they definitely won't waste it on your apartment. You're way more likely to back into a pole in the target parking lot while distracted by your phone. The real risk is human error, which is way less cinematic but infinitely more common. Reusing codes across multiple devices is a huge problem. Buying a no-name brand from Amazon that looked good in the photos is another. That company will disappear faster than your motivation to go to the gym. Connecting it to sketchy Wi-Fi or giving your code to someone and never changing it after they move out are also issues. You're not getting hacked by some mastermind. You're just leaving the digital equivalent of your door unlocked. So here's the decision that actually matters for most people. A good keypad lock with auto relock and offline access is safer for most people than either a traditional key or a fully connected smart lock. It doesn't rely on your phone battery dying at the exact moment you need it. It doesn't need internet or Wi-Fi to work. And you don't have to remember where you put a physical key. You can change codes instantly when your roommate moves out or you break up with someone who knows your birthday. It still works during power outages because it runs on batteries you can replace. And if someone tries to guess your code, they get a limited number of attempts. After that, the lock freezes them out, something a regular lock absolutely cannot do. It's like having a bouncer at your front door who never gets tired, never takes a break, and never lets the wrong person in. But what if you actually want remote access for convenience? Maybe you need to let in a dog walker while you're at work. Or your Airbnb guests are arriving early. And you like unlocking from your couch. That's fine. But here's the rule. Get a reputable brand that's been around for years. August, Yale, Schlage, not SmartLock Pro 2000 from a seller with 17 consonants in their name. Make sure it works offline and online. Meaning local unlock doesn't require internet. Remote features should be available when you need them. Check that it uses actual encryption and gets regular software updates. You need customer support you can actually reach. Think of it like buying a used car. You want a Honda or a Toyota with service records, not someone's mystery project from Craigslist that just needs a little work. Insurance companies are starting to ask questions about smart locks when you file claims. Some policies have clauses about reasonable security measures. If your lock was sketchy, off-brand, and got compromised, they might fight your coverage. Using bad security tech can cost you more than just the price of the lock itself. This matters because the stakes are literally your physical safety and everything you own. A bad decision here isn't like choosing the wrong streaming service. If your lock fails, whether it's getting hacked, the battery dying, the system glitching, or you forgetting your code, either you're locked out of your home or someone else might get in. Now let's talk about the buying rule you actually need. 
First, local unlock must work without internet, period. If your Wi-Fi goes down or your router decides to take a personal day, you still need to get inside your house. Second, auto relock is absolutely non-negotiable for safety. You want that door locking itself after it closes? Because you will forget. You forgot to cancel that free trial that turned into a subscription. You'll definitely forget to lock your door manually after carrying in six bags of groceries. Third, the brand must have been around for at least three years with consistent reviews and visible support. Fourth, you need easy code management. Creating, changing, and deleting codes should take 30 seconds. Not require a YouTube tutorial and a customer service call. And fifth, if you rent, check your lease before you buy anything. Most keypad locks that don't alter the door or require hardwiring are fine. But some landlords are weird about it. Here's what actually makes you safer in real life. If you're someone who constantly loses things, you leave your coffee on top of your car and drive away, you have a junk drawer full of keys you can't identify anymore, a smart lock will genuinely improve your security because it removes your biggest vulnerability. If you're someone who's disciplined, never loses anything, and doesn't mind carrying keys, a good deadbolt is perfectly fine and costs a fraction of the price. But if you're someone who gives keys to friends, pet sitters, contractors, or Airbnb guests, a keypad lock with changeable codes is objectively safer. You maintain control without collecting keys back, like you're running a hotel front desk. The bottom line is this. Smart locks aren't less safe than keys. They're less forgiving of lazy security habits. A key doesn't care if you use the same code everywhere or buy the cheapest option. A smart lock absolutely does. Buy quality, manage access like you'd manage passwords for your bank account, set up auto relock, and you've genuinely upgraded your security. Buy cheap, treat codes like they're public information, ignore software updates, and connect to Wi-Fi with a password like password123, and you're better off with a deadbolt and a hiding spot that's slightly more creative than under the mat. To recap, traditional keys can't be hacked remotely, but they get lost, copied, and hidden in obvious places. Smart locks eliminate physical key problems, but add new risks, like dead batteries, weak passwords, bad brands, and forgetting who has access codes. The Hollywood hacking scenario is rare. The real danger is human error and cheap equipment. A quality keypad lock with offline access and auto relock is safer for most people because it works without internet, lets you change codes instantly, and doesn't depend on your phone or memory. If you want remote access, by reputable brands with encryption, regular updates, and actual customer support. And remember, your lock is only as secure as your laziest security habit. So here's my question for you. If someone offered to pay for either a top-tier smart lock or five years of traditional deadbolt replacements, which would you choose and why?